Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan and in today's tutorial I will show you how to create better terrain for Blender together with Gear, which we'll be using to generate our base shape and Quixel Mixer for the texturing process. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my tutorials, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. Okay, to start off, we will open Gear. Once Gear is open, you can click on New Project and everything should load in fine. This can take a few seconds, so just be aware of that. We could already export this standard node setup, which is just a mountain node with an erosion node. But I actually want to create a little mountain range. So if we have a look in our nodes, you can already see a range node. But even though this might suggest that we get a mountain range, this doesn't really look like the result I want. So let's delete everything and add in a draw primitive. This will just give us a blank plane, but we can go to edit guides and draw in our mountain range, just like this. Now you can see that we still have a flat base, but we will work around this later. Now let's focus on these mountains. We can of course adjust the height, the displacement and shape, as well as scale and seed. You can also choose between a few styles. Right now I will use random mountains. Okay, next let's get an erosion node to simulate basic erosion. This will make our terrain look much better. But our ground is still pretty flat, so Let's add in another draw node and start with randomly drawing around. So everything is mostly filled. Now we can add another erosion node and erode this surface. We can even turn up the duration, apply the changes, so we get a bit more variance. Next let's add in a combine node, because we want to combine both surfaces with the add method and with a ratio of 100. This way we get a nice mountain range. Okay, perfect, this is our base shape. Now we just need to export it. To export, we can right click on our last node and select Mark for Export, which is also F3. Now in the Build tab up here, you can see that we have our combined node right here. And because we are just using the free community version, we can only export up to 1K. But I want to export a few more maps for the texturing process. So let's add in the growth data map, the slope map, as well as soil and flow. These will help us later in Mixer. If we plug our combined output into the growth map, you can see that we get a visualization of where plants would grow. Now, let's also mark this node for export and do the same with all three other nodes. Awesome, now let's choose a build path and start the build. Once the build is done, we can open Mixer to texture our terrain. Okay, let's create a new mix right here and call it whatever you like. I will be working in a working resolution of 1042 pixels, but you can change that later. This now is our environment. First, let's go to Layers, and in the Base Layer node, under Displacement, let's load our combine.tiff height map. Open it, and you can see that the displacement is very low, but we can adjust the strength value. To, in my case, for example, 20. Now we have to add different layers of textures. And for this environment, I will be using the black rock one as a base. So just click on it and you can see that we get this texture. Now, of course, we have to tile it a bit more. This is just way too large. So under placement, drag up the repetitions to 16. Also choose opacity masked as the blend mode and set wrap to underlying to 1 and also preserve details to 10. Now this texture is nicely wrapped onto our displacement map. And I think for me, I will go with a higher repetition value, for example, 32. Right now the tiling is very obvious, but this won't be later. So just follow along. Now I want to add more cliff-like shapes. So just click on, for example, rock cliff. And by the way, you will have to first download all these textures from the online section. Right here you can filter for what you need. So okay, once this texture is imported, also choose a higher repetition number. Wrap to underlying and opacity masked and also preserve details. And now we want to add a mask on this layer. So just click on this icon right here and select a map. Now select in this drop down menu, add image and add the slope image. Now we can easily wrap this texture to all sides of our mountains. By pressing 9 you can go into the mask view and you can see that we need to invert this mask. Now in one this texture is mapped onto the side of our mountains. but it is a bit too large, so I will also choose a repetition value of 32. 
Now let's add some more variation. For this I will use another rock type, which is this one right here. Again, select all our settings and then select a fitting mask. For example, the soil one. This will give us some more interesting shapes around our mountains. Again, with 9 we can preview our mask and make it, for example, more prominent by sliding this range slider. In this stage, you basically want to make sure that all the colors work together. If they don't, you can always go in the albedo tab and slide the match to underlying up. And this is also what I'm going to do right here. And maybe a bit, a bit right here. Awesome. Now I want to add one more rock layer, which is called gray rock. And let's again select a map, for example the flow one, which we haven't used yet. And you can see right here that I forgot to adjust the wrap to underlying option and the repetitions option. Okay, you can't really see any changes right now, but if we go into the mask view, we can see that in these areas the texture should be visible. Again, we can make it more prominent by adjusting the range. And if we enable and disable this one, we can see that it nicely breaks up the tiling issue we had before. Now, I want this to be a mountain range, so I want to add in some snow. For this, let's add in one of these snow textures, and I'm just going to use the fresh one. But there is one problem. We don't have a map for the snow. We can of course start by adjusting the tiling, but now everything is white and this is of course not what we want. For this, let's quickly go back into gear. Now let's add in a snowfall node. By plugging the output of the combined node into this snowfall node, it will simulate snowfall onto our mesh. To export this one, let's first unmark all the other textures and then mark this snowfall texture for export. In the build tab, we will now choose only the snow output, which is the second output of this map. This will give us a 2D mask. And again, start the build. Awesome! If we now go back into Mixer and add in a map mask, we can add the snowfall mask. And you can see that this works nicely together with the other terrain textures. There's one last thing I want to do, and this is to add some greenery. For example, this grass wild texture. And use the growth map we also exported as a mask. So select the growth map. And I forgot to set wrap to underlying to 1. And let's adjust the repetitions. And you can see that we can't really see any vegetation. So let's go into mask view and adjust the range slider just like this. And now we get some vegetation. This is maybe a bit too dark. So I will up match to underlying in the albedo tab. Great. Now we can export all these textures as, for example, 4K maps to render it in Blender. So go over to the Export tab, select a path and an export resolution of 4K. You can also choose to uncheck Diffuse because we won't use this map. Okay, these maps are now exported, so let's open Blender 2.9. We do this because this version has the new sky texture implemented. Once Blender is open, delete everything and add in a plane. We can scale this up a bit. Now let's go over to Cycles and choose experimental as our feature set and I will also choose my GPU as my device. Okay, let's add in a subdivision surface modifier, select simple and adaptive subdivision because all the displacement will happen in the nodes. So for this, let's give this plane a new material and with node wrangler enabled, press Control shift t on the node and select all your exported maps. Great, but if we would go into the image editor and have a look at our displacement map, we can see that this looks kind of off, because Mixer has exported this one not correctly. But, I mean, we have the 1K height map from Gear, so let's load this one. Click on the load icon and select our combine.tiff file. Also make sure to choose non-color as our color space. There's one thing I want to add, and this is the ambient occlusion texture. So duplicate our albedo one and select the ambient occlusion node. And again with Node Wrangler enabled, press Ctrl Shift and drag with right click from the base color node to the ambient occlusion one. This will automatically mix these together, but we want to use multiply. We can change the factor later, but I found that 0.5 works well in most cases. Now we can go into rendered mode. And we can already see that no displacement is happening. For this, go under settings, displacement and select displacement only. And now we have our mountain range 
displaced correctly. Okay, let's add in the sky texture. So go into the world nodes and search for sky. The new one is called Nishita. We can plug the color out and inputs together and we can see that it already nicely lights up our scene. But right now this looks pretty boring because everything is lit in our scene. So let's choose for example 30 degrees as our sun elevation. And now we can see that we get some nice shadows. We can also change our altitude to for example 1000 meters which will make it a bit more realistic. These other sliders, air, dust and ozone are just for you and how you want your scene to look. Now we can set up our camera. I of course want to make sure I have no seams in my final render so I will set the camera up right here. To preview your final subdivision value, you can always go under subdivision and viewport and set the viewport value to 1. This will give you the final look. But I would suggest you to keep it at 8 or 4, just so your viewport isn't that slow. Great. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see us in the next video next Saturday.